Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and we've got part four of uh, my series on oscillators this time. Now I've been working on uh, a couple more videos on the subject, possibly even three, and uh, one of the things I had to include was the uh, 555 chip as it's such a such an integral part of, of oscillators in circuit and has been for 50 years. Uh, but when I started looking, it, um, there's quite a lot to the 555, so I think it deserves um, a video all, all on its own. So that's what this is. So we're going to look at the two modes that you might run a 555 in, or two of the modes, and we're going to look at how we can vary frequency and duty cycle and also timing length. So let's start with a bit of triple five theory. OK, let's start with a bit of um, triple five theory here, courtesy of the TI datasheet, is an uh, internal circuit diagram. Uh, on the left hand side, between pin 8 and 1, which is the power supply and ground, you can see there are three resistors forming a voltage divider. Incidentally, depending which um, source you take your information from, uh, those resistors were supposed to be 5K, and that's why um, the chip is called the 555. Uh, reading elsewhere, the designer of the chip said that sort of rubbish it was picked because marketing thought it was a nice snappy number and would be good for sales. I'm inclined to believe the latter of those two tales, especially as I've measured a couple of my 555s and I don't get um, 5k as best as I can measure in any of those resistors. Anyway, either way, it doesn't matter. Um, it is the number. It's been with us for 50 odd years, so it's pretty famous. So what we've got is that voltage divider that's connected to a couple of comparators that have got inversions on the um, some of the inputs. Those two comparators feed into the, the reset and the set of a, a standard SR latch. We've got access via pin 4 to the, re to the um, reset. And then the output of that goes to an inverter and then to the output. Uh, I'll come to why there's an inverter there. That's because the output is actually taken from the, the bar cue side of the SR latch or the inverted side of the latch. That's so that um, we've got the ability to control the discharge transistor uh, whilst the output is high. And the inverter on the output sends the output high while, while that's going on. So that transistor at the bottom does the... Um, discharging of the external capacitor that controls the uh, the frequency. So there we go, there's two main modes you can use it in. There's monostable and astable, uh, usually shortened to astable. So let's start with astable because that's probably the most uh, common use of it. And in astable mode this is the general circuit arrangement, it's very common, you've doubtless seen it before. The two uh, resistors on the left hand side and the 100 nanofarad capacitor form the components that have the control over the um, the frequency or the timing of the, the flipping of the uh, the output of the chip. Uh, on the breadboard there's the layout, relatively straightforward. The 10 nanofarad capacitor is the rather large one at the top, that's because it's a, a high voltage one, it's just physically larger even though its value is smaller. And uh, to orient you a little bit, the orange jumper that runs around from the top to the bottom of the chip is the connection between pins 2 and 6 on the left hand side of the circuit diagram there. So the 100 nanofarad capacitor is one of the blue um, capacitors on the top right hand side and you've doubtless now spotted there's two of them and there's also a push button switch which isn't mentioned in the circuit diagram. Horror of horrors, that's because that's my quick and dirty way of inserting another 100 nanofarad capacitor there so we can quickly see the effect of uh, increasing that capacitance on, on what occurs at the output. So I'll be doing that and I'm going to be looking at the circuit output and also what's going on with that capacitor. We'll look at the yellow and the blue trace although the uh, picture there of the breadboard that you can see doesn't show the uh, the blue jumper wire that goes to the scope, you'll see that uh, on the bench video, which I think is a suitable point to say, let's stop all this theory and let's go and have a look at this on the bench. Okay, so here we are with the breadboard um, and the uh, astable uh, set up here on the right hand side. Uh, yellow line here goes to the yellow trace on the scope. Um, blue line is to allow us to look what's going on with the uh, capacitor that controls the um, well t is part of controlling the frequency which is actually that hundred nanofarad there 
I've got another 100 nanofarad here which I can just include in the circuit by pressing that button just to show you the effect of what changing the capacitance actually does. So uh, it is running. So let's have a look at the trace. You can see there, um, nice, uh, very nice square wave actually, about 550 hertz, something like that. And if I press the uh, button, uh, we double the capacitance to 200 nanofarads and you can see the uh, corresponding um, uh, reduction in frequency. Take it back out again, put it back in again, so you can see the effect of capacitance there. Obviously the resistor that uh, is above that capacitor in the circuit has some impact as well, but this that was just a, a quick and easy way of showing you the effect of, of changing the frequency. Uh, sorry, of changing the capacitance and how it controls the frequency. Right, let's, um, let's now turn on channel uh, the blue channel which is this trace here that's connected to these this capacitor so we'll do that um, by pressing this button I pressed the wrong button there I press the right button now and there is uh, the trace from the top of the capacitor and if you look closely you can see that uh, although that looks at first glance just like it's a triangle wave in fact the the lines are curved both the rising and the falling are curved and that's because that's the charging um, cycle of that well charge and discharge cycle of that capacitor so if i just press the button and include another 200 um, another 100 nanofarads there we go you can see probably a little bit better now the um, slight curvature of the charge and discharge um, uh, cycle of the capacitor and you can see how that uh, controls the um, the waveform and where the actual um, changes go on so the um, latch is high during the, um, the charging phase and goes low during the discharge phase so that's um, that's the astable okay so we look there at varying uh, the frequency uh, on a 555 it's also possible to vary the duty cycle um, now I did a look at this when I was talking about PWM back in video 171. So here's the circuit from video 171 and its attendant uh, breadboard layout. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just have a quick look at a clip uh, taken from that video. And apologies I'm using uh, a different microphone so the audio will sound a little different. And uh, second apology is the um, shape of the waveform on the scope uh, shows the bottom and the top of the wave as not being square uh, that's because the uh, scope probe needed compensating I've since done that and it does uh, indeed produce a square wave so uh, my apologies for that uh, that appallingly slack way of operating but uh, it does nonetheless demonstrate uh, the duty cycle so let's just have a look at that on the bench So here's the circuit exactly as described on the breadboard uh, and I've got the uh, output coming off here off pin 3 and I've got that attached to the scope and you can see it is running uh, just because of the value of, I hadn't got a, exactly the value I would like here so uh, that pot's a bit of a compromise but we've got, um, that's at its minimum setting at the moment um, so not quite zero but if I now slowly turn the pot up you can see the pulses are widening we go and we can get pretty much all the way up to 100% cycle just about there so that's the 555 doing the job rather nicely so that's back down again so we're managing to produce um, PWM which we can control with a potentiometer there using a, a 555 now we'll look at the 555 used in monstable mode or monostable mode so in other words it's uh, always in one particular um, state here is uh, the uh, general arrangement circuit diagram and um, I'm using an LED on the output with a, a current limiting resistor and uh, on the left hand side we've got um, a push button switch now acting as the trigger uh, the input to pin 2 is pulled high through a 10k resistor and pressing the push button um, takes that uh, pin 2 low 
which acts as the trigger and the amount of time you press that button for uh, doesn't affect the output so uh, we'll see that in action in a moment and the 10k resistor and the 220 microfarad capacitor there between um, pins uh, 6 and 7 they act as the um, as the control on the uh, timing of the um, output so pressing the button will cause the timer to go on to uh, cause the output to go high LED will light for its set amount of time depending on the value of the capacitor and the resistor uh, and then it will go out again and it will stay out until you um, provide it with another trigger so that's the, the timer mode uh, on the breadboard arrangements um, pretty straightforward uh, you can see the current limiting resistor there the yellow uh, violet black sorry yellow violet brown 470 ohm and a blue LED uh, capa control capacitor and its attendant uh, resistor at the top and uh, push button switch there on the bottom left with its pull up resistor also down on the bottom side so it's a bit upside down compared to the uh, circuit diagram but hopefully you get the, the general idea uh, and I'll be attaching probes to the output of pin 3 and also uh, to the top of the control capacitor so we can look at, at what's going on um, with those two traces. I will also be uh, uh, probing the um, action of the push button switch so that you can see the um, the effect of a long and a, a shorter press. So there we go that's Monstable let's go and have a look at that on the bench. Okay so let's now look at the, the mono stable um, circuit for the 555 there's a couple of additional lines here which um, weren't on the breadboard view that I showed you just now I'll talk about those in a moment so it's actually easier to show you this using the um, this little LED so I've got a button here when I press that button it takes the trigger input low currently it's tied high with this 10k resistor so if I just momentarily press that button that LED lights up and then eventually goes out like so and it doesn't matter whether I press it briefly or whether I press it for a great deal longer the actual amount of time the LED stays on is unchanged so it's not affected by the, the time of pressing the button now rather than wait for the scope to acquire uh, images of that just have a look at these two um, traces here's a trace of a with a short press so you can see um, the uh, trace going low which is the uh, the blue trace that's the uh, button being pressed and the output or the LED is the yellow trace so you can see it goes high and if we now move on to uh, another one where I've pressed the button for longer you can see that although the button press on the blue trace is a lot longer the yellow trace uh, is uh, exactly the same so um, and we'll come back to, to what's going on with um, this capacitor in a moment but to change the duration of that is very straightforward uh, this uh, capacitor here is a two, uh, 220 I think microfarad yeah so let's um, add in here a much larger one this is a 470 uh, microfarad uh, must make sure I get it the, the right way around underground there yeah so if we press the button now, uh, a larger capacitance should give us a much longer delay. And as you can see, indeed it does. Now obviously the resistor, um, which is the, this one here, that allows that capacitor to charge, uh, also has uh, an impact on the, on the cycle time, obviously. Um, but it was just easier to swap capacitors over so this is a, a slightly shorter one we had 220 first then 470 this is 100 uh, microfarads so let's put this will be a much shorter one yep there you go so hopefully you've seen the impact of changing that capacitor over let's go back to the original um, 220 microfarad there okay now let's have a look at what's going on with this capacitor and how that fits in with the the output uh, of the timer uh, so now we've got the green trace looking at the capacitor 
and I'm just going to show you the scope traces because you're just going to see the LED switching on and off. So here's a scope trace uh, for a short press and here's a scope trace for a long press. Again the output on the yellow trace is unchanged by the, the length of the press but what you can hopefully see there is that the the moment the button's pressed the capacitor begins to charge up. When it reaches a uh, uh, a certain level which is determined by the, the voltage dividers uh, circuit both in and outside the, the chip uh, the um, output goes uh, low again and you get the um, the timing cycle completes and the capacitor is very rapidly uh, discharged. So that's the action of a monstable uh, and you could use that kind of thing for for instance for switch debouncing or it could be to turn on something for a, an amount of time uh, just at the, the press of a button, whatever that is, you know, an external light or something, or a, a motor, something like that. Anyway, there you go, that's the, the 555 and it's perhaps less common application of actually being a timer, um, but it does its monstable job uh, rather well indeed. Okay, well there you have um, quite a bit of detail on the 555, I'm sure that somebody will have uh, something to say about uh, some inaccuracy or other but uh, being a hobbyist I'm not perfect but uh, hopefully it's, uh, it's been useful I've certainly enjoyed uh, finding out a bit more about uh, a chip that I've been um, reading about and seeing in circuits for, for nearly for pretty much all of my adult life um, so that's pretty amazing these days of course uh, it tends to get um, replaced by microcontrollers but it no nonetheless still undoubtedly has its place Thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video.